starting with some celery juice. <laughs> oh, so plain. It's supposed to be really good for thyroid, though. Ow, I really hurt myself. All right. So anyway, I'm Ari. I'm a business coach, a marketing genius, and I guess online educator now. And so today, hold on, let me put my lights a little bit. Today, I'm going to talk about how to do email marketing the right way, right? The right way to do email marketing, however you want to phrase it, however you want to word it. That's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm still really bright. So I know I can never find like the right balance between, between these. Oh, bet Brittany's here. Yes, I need that. All right. So let us jump into it. Just reading through my notes. All right, so I think the first people, the first mistake that people make when doing their email marketing is that they don't have a welcome sequence. They skip this part; they take forever to do it. And a welcome sequence is very important because it lets your audience know, first of all, what to expect from you. So, like, how often you're going to email them, what you're going to email them about, and um, it also establishes. Um, some reciprocity because you are supposed to give freebies, right? Give, give, give. Um, you're supposed to give people something before you ask for something, right? So I think Gary Vee says, jab, 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 right hook. Give, 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 then make the ask, right? So uh, you need a welcome sequence, right? People want to know who's going to be in their inbox. And when you do it, like they just start to look forward to your emails. Um, another mistake I think people make is that they try to pitch or sell way too soon and way too much. So what happens when you don't like diversify your content and mix it up, um, people start to say like, oh God, Ari's emailing me. It's probably another sales email versus, oh yay, Ari's emailing me. It's probably some like good shit in here. So for a start, I like to do 80, 20, um, as a start for like, um, promotional content versus nurture content, right? So nurture content is more so storytelling, painting a picture, empowering people, inspiring them versus hello versus um, the pitching, right? Selling something, right? And just because you're doing a nurture email doesn't mean you can't make an offer. It's just the email isn't, that's not set around that, right? So you can do a nurture email and then in the PS, you know, mention something, have a call to action, or you can, you know, I can talk about like my project management course in the story or my membership and then just link the name of it. Right. But the whole email isn't centered around, Hey, you should buy this. And this is why. Right. So if you're going to email once a week, you probably want to do like three of those emails be nurture emails. And then one of those emails be, um, a pitch email, a sales email. Right. What else? segmenting, right? So being able to segment your audience based off of the bucket that they fall in. So who you serve, the different types of people that you serve or work with. It's like segmenting to get ideas. Um, customers, you can, you know, segment your customers by having, I have a tag for all customers, anyone who's ever bought anything from me. I have tags based off of what they bought, whether it was digital products, service, consult calls, the types of consult calls, the types of digital products, (laughs) you know, uh, the types of services, right? So when I am doing a sales email or making an offer, I first test it within a segment to see how it does. And then based off of that feedback and the sales, I'll then offer it to my entire list, right? Or not to my list at all. So the membership, I just offered that to my course students first, right? They got first dibs on it. They get to be in it first. They'll get it at the lowest that it'll ever be. And, you know, I didn't bother my whole list, you know, with the sales uh, sequence. Irv asked, use ConvertKit. Yes, I use ConvertKit. It scales nicely. It does all the things that I'm talking about. I'm really happy with, like, their open rates and deliverability. So, you know, I I like ConvertKit. Uh, I don't love Active Campaign too much, but it's just personal preference. And um, Mailer Light looks like it's a good alternative, um, but you know, we'll 
we'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that. I haven't used it, but it looks like a good alternative from what I've seen by poking around in there. Um, and then just think about like how you want to be emailed. Like how does it feel to be sent promotional emails all the time, to be asked for shit all the time? Like, does that feel good? But does that feel great? I mean, if you're constantly just asking your audience for stuff, asking them to buy without providing the value, then yeah, you're going to start to see like your open rates start to decline. You're going to burn out your list over the long term. And then you're ruining, you know, a valuable asset that you have. Um, so the seller's just getting heartburn. Does anybody have questions when it comes to email marketing, building your email list? Um, next month when the membership reopens, we're focusing on email marketing. So I'm going to walk you through how to set up, right? I'm going to show you how to do your tagging, your segmenting. You're going to write your welcome sequence and all that good shit. You're going to like be set up to prosper and start building your email list. I'm very excited about it. So any questions? Right now we just sit here and look at each other. My podcast intros came in. What's up, Carmen? I was trying to make sure you weren't live again when I went on this time. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, let me make sure. All right, well, it doesn't look like you'll have questions. Hey, Susie, about email marketing. So I'll give you some best tips um, as far as like ConvertKit. So you wanna make sure you verify your domain. Hey, Buddha. You want to make sure that you verify your domain in your ConvertKit settings. Um, you don't want to use an at gmail.com email address. Hey, I don't know your name, but hey. Oh, Sladika. <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to use a gmail.com email address. Oh damn. I was trying not to go on when you were on live. Oh, you're welcome, Brian. Uh, your from name, your from name, so like who the email is coming from, you always want that to be your personal name. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my friend that I met in Thailand is on, I'm just, I laugh every time I see them because the whole time we're just like, Swatika. <laughs> good memories, good times. Hey, Deara. Um, and all of you should be building an email list. Like if you're building, if you have some type of following, especially like, all of y'all should be building an email list, right? Because always assume that you're going to get shut down. Uh, yes, I purchased the podcast intro, sweeper, and outro. I really wanted it to be a Black woman's voice, but I couldn't find anything on Fiverr. So we're going to see how this turns out. Do you want to hear it? No, don't use gmail.com. You want to use a branded email. So mine's like at arielhale.com. And it's like six site hosting where you buy them um what else verify your domain uh connect your domain to convert kit i need to do this myself um where it's like arielhill.com forward slash link instead of like that crazy convert kit url right people are more likely to click a branded url than like a random looking url put your freaking Facebook pixel and Google pixel on your landing pages. Uh, don't do image heavy emails. So like limit it to one or two images. I try not to do more than three links because we found that three links or less, right? Top, middle, bottom, um, do better. Your emails are less likely to show up in the spam or promotions box. Listening to you just reaffirmed so much. Oh, I'm glad. All right, let's listen to this podcast intro. I have no idea what it sounds like. Oh crap, my headphones are connected. Uh oh, it's not gonna work. Yeah, my computer does this weird thing with my headphones. 
Well, maybe you all will hear it tonight when I release a new episode. Do you use WordPress for your site? I'm on Squarespace for my personal site, and then my blog is on WordPress. I need help with the Facebook pixel thing. Okay, Andrew, just tag me in the membership group, and I will do something on that. Does Gmail do branded emails like link to your site? Google does, so you can do a Google domain, and I think it's like six bucks a month. Hey, Angie. I just need to buy content at this point. I'm confused. Uh, why do you need to buy content? Now I'm confused. It's for what? Ooh, I need to buy apples. I do not like how that celery juice just tastes by itself. Mm -mm. I'm going to drink it. All right. So I'm going to go take care of this. I need to reschedule some calls too. But it's been a pleasure as usual. Um, I like when y'all ask me questions, but you've been pretty quiet lately. Okay, Austin, you said you need to buy content at this point. If you can just write emails, like, I don't, I don't understand the question. I woke up grumpy this morning, so I'm trying not to be a bitch, but <laughs> I don't get what you're asking me. <laughs> I mean, if you don't know what to write for weekly emails, then buy, you know, prompts or email templates and then just change them into your own words add your own stories and experiences the the point is to email weekly and keep in touch with your audience because not everybody sees what's going on on social media at the time that you post it right so you have to think of everything like um all of these things are parts of the machine that keeps your business running so email is just a system Social media is just a system. Um, what else? Ads are a system. Doing lives are part of the system, right? These are podcasting is part of the system. These are all ways that you stay in touch with your audience, right? On the platforms and the ways that they prefer, they prefer to be kept in touch with, right? And I think like on social media, only like 1% of your audience actually sees the content at the time that it was posted. 1%. So if I have, what, 17,500 followers, only 175 people may have seen that tweet I tweeted at that time. How are you even getting email? Should there be a pop-up on your site? So you have an email sign-up form, landing pages, freebies, pop-ups, sidebars. Um, there's tons of ways to collect email addresses. I'm going to sneeze. I'm not going to sneeze. Okay, we're good. We're good. When is the season over? Because I'm over it. No, so like I see a lot of people, uh, I split my lid open, lip open yesterday. Um, not Ari instead of Ari Hale. I do Ari Hale. What I'm talking about is some people forget to change. It'll say from, you know, emails at arielhale.com instead of from arielhale.com. That's what I'm talking about. I gotta let the dog down if she wants to go pee. <laughs> Does that make sense? What's up, Glenda? All right, well, I may do these less often. Let y'all build up some time to ask questions. <laughs> We're just looking at each other now, which is fine. It's fine. Um, so I'm going to handle my business, get some shit done. Oh, what's up, bees? Wow, well, what? I 
I was so grouchy with these this morning. <laughs> oh, you're deciding if you want to use um your your both your first name and last name. Um ask away. <laughs> I mean, so I think the first name, last name thing isn't something that really matters too much. I mean, I use both because, like, it's easier to find me that way. But my website's arielhill.com, but I go by Ari, right? I don't know. I do both. I don't really mind. I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. Be grouchy at Anchor and Apple. <laughs> Do you think it's better to start free or low priced? Um, it depends. What is the service you're trying to start and what's your level of experience? Have you done the service before? Do you have testimonials? Do you have work that you've used previously? Like what is, what's the service and what's your experience level with it? tech career advice starting out um you're if you're just starting out in tech i here's my thing if i just started out in something like i'm probably not going to monetize that until i've been doing it for like at least a year or two or have gotten some type of like significant results right so for me, I would just, I wouldn't, I, I personally wouldn't feel right about monetizing something I'm do like, I have no experience in, or like I started off fresh. So, or I would start really, no, okay, I'll say I'll start really low price because not a lot of people know this. I'm a certified life coach because, you know, there's one of those things that like you're turning 30 and you're like having a quarter life crisis. So you go get your life coaching certification. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. So, um, so, you know, I've had like training, right? I'm a certified life coach, right? So like when people ask like, oh, like, how do you ask these good questions? How are you able to get people motivated and, you know, in the zones? Cause like I've been trained to do that. So when I was offering business coaching, it wasn't, I had never like run like an actual business coaching program before right? Um, so I launched it as a beta and I told my audience, like, this is something new um, that I'm down. So if you're down by that, if you're down with that, then, you know, like, let's get some shit done, right? And so I charged very, very low for it, very low, mostly just to keep it like low commitment on my end. And just to kind of figure out, like, what's the structure of this? Do I want it? Do I want to do it again? Blah, blah, blah. Right. But I had that, like, base level of training. I've I've tested, right, what I'm basically coaching the people I have now with my friends over the last year. So, um, you know, it, it's not something that was, like, brand new. What what is a marketing strategy that you use that has generated the most noise feedback? Building my email list and emailing them an offer. That is definitely it. Hold on, I need to let the dog out. You gotta go pee? You gotta do your pee pee? Go. Okay. Email list, email list, email list, email list, email list. That is that has been the most profitable. That has generated the most results. Email list, 1,000%. Most frequently asked question on console calls. The most frequently asked question I get is people uh, wanting permission to try or do something. So they're looking at 
either being validated or giving permission. Do you think this is a good idea? Should I do this? Y'all have the answers. You're just scared to fuck up. <laughs> so you're looking for permission to fuck up. Have you ever had a coach? I've had several coaches. I have two right now. I have a business coach and a mindset coach that I just started with. I'm mostly motivated by you to my reasonable, due to my reasonable fear of you. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> There's no reason to be scared of me. What's your most requested service? I don't get, I don't necessarily get asked for something specific because I don't really have anything laid out specifically. The thing I get asked for the most is how can I work with you? Like, that's, that's probably it. That's the most, that's what I get. Like, how can I work with you? Do you do consoles? Do you do retainers? Get out, Gigi. A simple form will do for starting out building your email list. Yeah, like. Stop complicating shit, worrying about it being pretty. My email signup list is so ugly and it converts at like 80%, <laughs> 50 to 80%, depending on where I put it. And it's so ugly. It's not designed at all. Like, just put the shit up, right? And pretty doesn't always, usually pretty doesn't convert well. So all these like extra crazy things that y'all are doing for your marketing, like stop simplify it just give people their content i'm building a service-based business and plan on including an email list you have to have an email list you need to build an audience and then as soon as possible go do in-person stuff and you should be booked very quickly in person's always faster than online Yeah, like, stop doing all this extra shit. All y'all are doing is procrastinating from going to, like, market and get sales. That's all it is. I don't have a, a an explicit list of service offerings at all. I have my course. I have my membership. And then that's really, right now, the only way to work with me. And then coaching, I'm going to offer it to my current. If I do it again, I'm going to offer it to my current people first. And then if there are slots left, I'll email my list. I'll probably offer it to like my students first and then whatever remaining slots I'll offer to my list. And then if there's any left, then I'll offer it to social media. What lesson took you the longest to unlearn in business? Uh, to say no <laughs> and to raise my prices for sure. I had a really hard time saying no. I had like a really big thing around being like a people pleaser and making people happy. And now I'm at the point where like, if it doesn't feel good for me, if it's not fun, if it's not aligned, I don't give a shit. I don't care how much money you're trying to pay me. Like my, my peace, my level of peace and tranquility is not worth any of the bullshit. I won't even touch a launch right now. You could not pay me. I wouldn't even take millions of dollars to do a launch. Nope. Mm -mm. No, thank you. I needed to hear that. Thank you. Oh, good. Yeah, I've been through a lot of crazy shit in the last couple of years, so now I'm just like, Nah, nah, because then you also, I think also something you learn in business quickly is that no matter what a client or employer tells you, they're always for themselves, no matter how sweet they try to make shit look <laughs> at the end of the day, they're for themselves, right? So you have to operate in the same way. You have to protect yourself and do what's best for you and prioritize yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are not the priority. And it sucks to hear. <laughs> but, I mean, that it is what it is, right? So when you operate that way, when you operate like you have nothing to lose, you have nothing to lose. You know, I'm very much myself. And people, are, people tell me, you should tone it down. You should stop cussing. You shouldn't make sexual innuendos. And I'm just like, I'm, first of all, I'm grown. I pay my bills. So I'm going to say what I want. 
I'm going to move and do what I want. And the people who are okay with that hang out. And the ones who aren't, they leave. And it's cool. It's fine. I don't want you in my space unless you're going to accept me for me. What's up? I have real squids. Real squids? Yeah. What is that? Um, squids are the type of octopuses. They have way long arms and the tentacles are uh, the shoot weight. Okay, I need to finish this live and then yeah. I can go help you. And, and squids have a lot of arms. Did you hear me? Yeah, squids have a lot of arms. Okay, well, I'm doing this right now. Okay. okay? So I'll meet you in the other room when I'm finished. Okay. Deal? Foods, yeah. Deal? Yeah. Deal. All right. Ciao. Yeah. yeah, and I want spook pets. Okay. Goodbye. Cause, Love you. Cause are way good. At the restaurant. All right. Close my door. My clients are primarily attorneys. In-person marketing will be great once outside opens up. Yes, girl. Do, if you can, host a brunch or a happy hour. Lawyers love to drink and they love to network, let me tell you. So, host a little something, something, have some drinks, have some appetizers, and um, bring in people that, like, could do business with lawyers also, right? So, like, who would be on, like, a legal team for your niche or something? No, he wasn't done talking at all. <laughs> I I completely tuned him out too. I was like, yes, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> Any email marketing mistakes you made in the past and learned from? Yeah, uh, not setting up my email list uh, faster. Um, I mean, sending an email to myself and checking the from name, the from email, the subject line, clicking all the links in the email to make sure that they work. Yes, lawyers need to de-stress. Yeah, he does love animals. He, like, can memorize stuff about animals like, like that, but is having a very hard time telling me what letter is C and F. <laughs> like, <laughs> if he's interested in something, he will pick it up immediately, but if he doesn't care about it, like, he has no desire. Oh, my ski mask arrived. Exciting. All right, y'all. I don't think I have any more questions, so I'm going to hop off. I do not even think to add myself to my email list. Yeah, I add myself, but you can also send a test to yourself as well. At least through ConvertKit, you can. You should be able to through all of them. All right, y'all. Peace out. I have shit to do. I'll check y'all later. Do me a favor. Share this, you know. And yeah, I'll check you sometime tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. Have some questions ready for me. <laughs>